The Real Story of the Bible Episode 2 A Jealous God By the end of the Canaanite period, the formerly minor deity Yahweh had merged with El, the culture's principal god. Yahweh, now known interchangeably as El, had inherited the goddess Asherah as his wife, and had become father to all of El's children within the pantheon. He was also endowed with El's symbology, such as the use of horned altars, representing the horns of the sacred bull, similarly to the horns on El's crown, and daily sacrifices of bulls. Cultural and political changes had also occurred in Canaan over a period of a few centuries. City-states had given way to kingdoms. King Solomon of Bible fame had built a massive temple to Yahweh in Jerusalem, making that city not only the political center of the Davidic Empire, but also the religious and cultural centers as well. Worship was still polytheistic, and Solomon had also built a vast collection of temples to Canaan's many other gods throughout the kingdom. Riches had flooded the nation. It must have seemed to the Canaanites that life could not get any better. It could, however, get much worse. Yahweh, like any god, would become angry when he was ignored or disobeyed. As a god of war, he needed to be happy for Canaan to be safe from its enemies. But in the year 597, after a series of regional wars, the nation and Jerusalem were conquered by Babylon, and the people were exiled to that foreign land. Yahweh smited his people with an unprecedented rage, even allowing his own grand temple to be ransacked and destroyed. Desperate for a reason why their most powerful deity would treat his worshippers in this way, the exiled Canaanites soon came to a conclusion. Yahweh had become a very jealous god. Only exclusive worship would appease him. This was not true monotheism developing. That would come later. This was monolatrism, or belief in the existence of many gods, but worship of only one. Yahweh would still be known by titles such as God of Gods and Most High God, and for a time would still have a name used by his people. Only gods within polytheistic pantheons require names. A monotheistic god requires no means to distinguish him from other non-existent gods. It would be during the development of monotheism that the name Yahweh would eventually fall out of use. This new religion developing among the exiles would be encoded in a set of writings, a collection of laws, mythology, and oral histories known today as the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament. Central to these writings would be the command now found in Exodus 20, verses 2 and 3. I am Yahweh your God. You must have no other gods before me. The people themselves also began to forge a new national identity in the histories written in their texts. Inexplicably, they would cast their own ancestors and their own culture as their historical foes, and would create stories of conquest and genocide against them. This, though, would turn into an intracultural struggle, as many Israelites would continue to worship traditional gods and goddesses, particularly fertility goddess and wife to Yahweh, Asherah, and the Baals. Cultural leaders, priests, and prophets of Yahweh would write extensively about this struggle, depicting the worship of other gods as a foreign practice which had always angered Yahweh and brought punishment and sorrow onto his people. From Israelite worship of a calf idol at Mount Sinai, which had led Yahweh to order Moses to kill many perpetrators, to the continuing worship of the Baals, Moloch, and other gods, which eventually would lead to the very predicament in which captive Israelites now found themselves in Babylon, it would be idolatry, adopted from foreign sources, that had caused all Israelite problems. Some legendary Canaanite figures, such as Abraham and Isaac, 
would survive as new Israelite forefathers. Entirely new characters, such as Moses, would be added, and Canaanite mythology would be melded with elements from other mythologies, such as the creation narrative in the Epic of Gilgamesh. The result would be a fascinating and engaging set of texts that would be taken as history until the late 19th and early 20th centuries, when modern archaeology would begin to untangle the hidden history of one of mankind's most ancient cultures. Thank you for watching the real story of the Bible. Please return next week for Episode 3, Sons of Abraham.